Mark, all hype. Um, what do you think? I'll start with you, Mark. Um, I think you might be all hype. Said I don't know if he knows all the nooks and crannies of this or whatever. I'm sure you probably do or know a little bit about what's going on here for sure. Uh, Fuentes versus Medica, the uh, mega clash tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. What do you think? Well, I really like uh, Jim, and I really like Nick. I like both of them. I think they're both uh, great content creators. I think Jim's made some of the best videos I've ever had the pleasure of watching in the history of the internet. Uh, I think everyone's laughed at his uh, video, Piss Yourself to Own the Libs, and also his documentaries. I really liked his documentary on uh, uh, Wings of Redemption. That was particularly wondrous. And I think... He's always been, to me, he's always been a good guy. I've always enjoyed his content. I'm not really sure how this sort of blew up. But I think Nick is obviously leading the biggest sort of nationalist group in America at the moment. He is doing great work. He's having great conferences. He's doing some really, really um, great, great work. And I don't know. I don't really want to see two people that I, I like going at it. Uh, I, I think that um, both of them have done really, really good stuff. And ultimately, they're two people I'd like to see on the same side. What do you think about that, all hype? I'll be honest. I want to see Nick just absolutely wreck and destroy Medicare tonight. Uh, I think his stream today, we were going through it this morning. I'm biased, obviously. <laughs> So I just, uh, you know, I think that goes without saying. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I want to see tonight. Well, I mean, I like obviously, like you're in it, and I think this is like a mo- like, like this is clearly like mob dynamics going on. Uh, and I think the biggest sign of like the mob dynamics is the um, the rape allegation. I think that's like the biggest because like what you have is you have a woman telling a story putting on the waterworks and then like Medicare just believes and and look let's be frank about this like part of like one of the traits of like i guess the quote unquote right wing is like not believing claimed victims of stuff and just like sort of being skeptical and like seeing Medicare just kind of believe it based on words and waterworks um makes me think something's different going on like about that that's basically my view view, view of this and like there's there's really it's, it's really it really looks like there's a, there's a mobbing campaign and that's what i look at i'm also wondering if like i don't, I don't know part of like the conspiracy brain of me is like nick is doing this for like um to attract people to to cozy because he's building up a platform and pretty su- su- successfully, I might add. And I wonder if this is like kind of if he's kind of going all in on this just to like um, not just for it, but like as a as a bonus to bring people over to his platform. So this is kind of a cozy adjacent event. Sort of thing. But that's my view on that. <laughs> Now, as a bonus that it's bringing people. Yeah, I mean, I could see that a little bit, that this, um, like, big fights happen on Cozy, right? Or, you know, nobody gives a fuck. Um, but also, I don't know. I think I think the critiques he, he made are kind of uh, cutting, really, just about the this, his whole entire style. Um, and then, like you said, of course, you brought up the fake rape ac- accusations they threw my way. How they hound everybody who comes on my show. They hound me when I go on other shows. I mean, clearly they're... Their goal, they talk about life ruination. Their Who's they? To- Who's they? I'm, Medicare, I'm quite frankly. Behind the time Medicare. I know Medicare. That you've fallen out with Gator and Worski. Yeah, Medicare. But- Medicare, but I mean they're involved too. I mean he's pushing that. They're all in the same group now, basically. I mean I don't know what to say. Like they're all pushing that shit on chemo casino. Uh, Medicare is going on there, trumpeting that stuff, promoting their shit. Like I mean. This is just a fact, right? So they're all running together, basically. Uh, and he personally uh, has trumpeted that bullshit, uh, the fake rape allegations. Uh, and just listen and believe for no other reason than... And it's not credible, by the way. And it's just listen and believe for no other reason than he's trying to fuck with me, right? And then he goes, oh, well, Ralph, why are you taking it so seriously? Why are you getting so upset? Okay, well, you know... That's a serious fucking thing, right? Uh, and some of these retards actually run with it and actually fucking believe that shit. I don't know. I mean, I can imagine that Jim himself believes that garbage. But, you know, when 100 people are in your mentions talking about you're a rapist and I'm not, 
you know, I don't think that's funny. Like, that doesn't make me laugh. You know, what I think is funny, following a DMCA on Flamenco's channel, that makes me laugh uh, when they take down his shit. So, I mean, I guess we just have a different sense of humor. Maybe that's maybe that's no, what it look, is. Look, nobody should be calling you a rapist. But you've got to remember, and, and to, I'm, I'm maybe a bit older than a lot of people here, and the way I used to deal with things is the way – I don't deal with things now. I deal with things slightly differently. And if somebody who is a friend of mine or an associate or somebody that in the past I've worked with and they do something that annoys me, I just ring them up and privately speak to them and, and you know, quietly tell them that maybe they've done something that I don't appreciate and that maybe they should stop doing things that I don't appreciate because those things might lead to upset further down the line. And I think having a private conversation and nudging people in the right direction and, you know, shaking hands can always be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. And honestly, nine times out of ten, um, any beef uh, could have probably been settled that way. Yeah, I think that that's true. Um, in my, yeah, in my look, experience. Some of these people stuck by yeah. you for a long time, Ethan. Like, yeah. you know, I was sad when you fell out with Gator. I'll tell you something. Um, when you were falling out with Gator, I saw him say some stuff about you. And believe it or not, I spoke to you privately about it. And I actually tried to ring him. I actually phoned him and tried to get in touch with him and say, look, mate, this guy has been your friend for a long time. You know, don't do this. Um, I didn't tell you I did that, but I did that. You know, like when Andy had problems in the past, I rang him privately and spoke to him. Like when you've had problems in the past, we've spoke for hours on the phone. Yeah. You know, I, I don't need to air everything that I do in public. But the reason I don't want you guys to fall out isn't because I'm soft. It's not because I'm some kind of, you know, liberal loser who wants everyone to hug. It's because I feel that there's so few of us. And when I say us, I mean people who have generally this point of view about the world. And... I don't want to see us all shanking each other because when we do that, the only people we actually aid in the long run is our actual enemies. And our actual enemies are people like the state, people who are, you know, putting you on no fly lists, people who are preventing us taking donations, who are deplatforming us. They're the people that I really, really want to see, you know, dealt with. Not people who I'm sort of more politically adjacent to and might be able to come to a, you know, agreement with behind closed doors. You know, at the end of the day, it, it's all about um, winning. And I, I sometimes think maybe we should put all of our energies into actually winning. And then when we've won, we can uh, deal with each other afterwards. Yeah, you if know, there is anything I don't, you know, with. I don't disagree with that. In theory, I guess you know what I mean. Um, and so, I mean, that'd be great, really. Yeah, everything you said is true. Like we are small in number, you know, in terms of like force projection and power. It is uh, sometimes a detriment to be so caught. I say sometimes because a little intramural is good, right? Uh, you know, some of that's good. Arguing amongst yourselves and, yeah. and toughening you up for I the think outside. The problem with but, just a little, just a little bit of that is that there's like an industry to like. Like, it's been around forever. It's been around since, like, the Encyclopedia. When Encyclopedia Dramatica was the day, I think Kiwi Farms has basically taken the slot yeah. of Encyclopedia Dramatica. Like, but the thing is, that industry of, like, making fun of people has always been around, and they've always been looking for that. And I think another problem is that, like, uh, th the problem is if you spend a lot of time on the, like, uncensored Internet, like, this kind of ties into something that like shit libs will say is that, well, if you don't censor Twitter, like everyone's going to become fascist. Right. So, but so if you spend a lot of time on the uncensored internet, like you become fascist. And so like, no, you know, on the Kiwi farms, like he, I, I, his political views, you could say lean right. And as a result, that's the people he sees. And so if there's, and so he, so there's a problem. He's running basically the, the, the central drama hub, because he spends a lot of time on the uncensored internet, he becomes quote unquote right wing fascist, whatever. Um, and the result of that is that that ends up being who he sees, right? He sees people, he sees people that he can potentially make into a target for his industry, you know? And so he has kind of a financial incentive yeah. to, to, do, to do that, to make targets, to. You know, to, to, like, go to people's houses. And the thing is, like, when someone goes to your house and, like, just, you know, it's like, oh, they're just putting diapers on your doorstep. What's the problem? Oh, they're just putting, like, an also cock sticker on your truck. What's the problem? But, like, you know, I don't know. How would you like it if somebody who you don't know is coming to your house and just doing stuff? 
right? Like it, it, it has it, like it's it's a yeah. It's not. Well, it's, it's done to it's it's, it's done situation. to try to instill some type of fear in the first place, or else you wouldn't do it. There's no other reason to go to somebody's house, so. right? Like, I mean, that's the that's the whole point behind you it. You could come to my house for a barbecue. I'd invite you. <laughs> but you and Ryan, my place yeah. barbecue. Now, yeah. I'm not fearful, but what I'm saying is that's that's the only reason. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's no other reason to do something like that. I'd uh, invite I'd invite you both to my house, and and also invite the cozy and the Odyssey chats as well. Everyone oh wow! To my house. <laughs> We're gonna have a battle royale then if you do that. It would be amazing, mate. We'd yeah. all come to my house. Lots of, you know, I do the best. Myself and the guy called The Patriot, who I stream with, we do the best gourmet hot dogs. And since his wife stepped in and started to help with the uh, preparation process, absolutely fantastic. Hot and spicy, melted cheese Mm. melted into the dog itself, crispy onions sprinkled Mm. inside, absolutely fantastic. Okay, that sounds like I could be there for that. Yeah, if they'll let me into the UK still, you know, I used to have a a British wife and I could get in. I don't know if they'll let me in now, really, but uh, you know. And then if and you know, and then and then if after a few gourmet hot dogs and maybe the odd uh, beverage, you know, we've got something to settle, we could do it. You know, man, man to man, a beer summit like Obama hosted. Yeah, one of those one of those moments where you just have a quiet word with someone if it can't be settled amicably, you know. If we bring That's flamenco, we could call it the queer summit. You don't know flamenco, I don't think. But. <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah, I think Colette and I are kind of like the uh, the let's let's break it up, guys. So we're going to be really popular like that because when you say to break up a fight, both sides end up liking you. That's how. It yeah, I could tell that was a really popular message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going over great. I do understand that, but uh, and I wrote this down to make sure I brought it back up. Sometimes somebody says some things uh, that I'm not really getting over. You know that fat dyke that Warski streams with that fucking dressed up and acted like he was my dead father and did a comedy skit. I'm not getting over that. I'm not being cool with that. You understand? Uh, I'm not yeah. going to be cool with somebody who's spreading fake rape allegations. If they came out and completely disavowed it, maybe, and apologized or something like that. Other than that, I'm not trying to be cool with somebody like that. Um, so, in theory, that's what I'm saying. In theory, yeah, I agree with you. But sometimes it gets taken to a certain level where it's, I don't know, the best you could hope for is maybe disengagement, maybe. Uh, or just they do their thing, you do yours. But uh, I'm not interested in being cool with a motherfucker like that. So I, I don't know. That's, that's kind of my take there, but I do agree with it in theory that, yeah, I mean, yeah. you would want it to maybe not rise to, to this level of animosity, yeah. but I don't know. It was maybe easy for us to say, I guess. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. Just forgive. Well, I don't know about that. I'm not really, I'm not really interested in forgiving that. Um, at least not without some kind of sincerity behind it. Right. Some, I, even then, man, like, they, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. your dead family's brought into it. And, again, I've said a lot of fucked up shit, but I didn't expect forgiveness for it either. I didn't expect somebody to shake it off and just say we're cool. You know, I said a lot of shit about Coach Red Pill. I don't think he's going to come on this show and start slapping me on the back and talking about how funny I am. You know, that's not going to happen. And I wouldn't expect it to happen. So, all right, let's play a super chat. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.